stocks. Let's put the recovery in some context now. Has the glut of credit that was created in the 1990s as well as the beginning of this decade, has it been worked off? Let's find out more. We have Peter Cicchini. He is the chief strategist and head of special situations at BGC Financial. Peter, welcome to Bloomberg. So take a look at credit for us. Yes. What is the state of credit now for the consumer? Um, unfortunately, I believe it's somewhat dire. Um, we did go through a period of real excess where the consumer levered up um, way beyond, I believe, what should have occurred. Borrowed more than they could possibly pay off. Correct. Correct. Right now, um, total disposable income, or I should say household debt as a percentage of total disposable income, is at about 122 percent, which is an enormous sum relative to history. For the three decades preceding where it is today, it was between 60 and 80 percent. Um, it will take, by my estimation, about $2 trillion of deleveraging, assuming there's no income growth, for us to get back to 100%, uh, which is where many economists believe we need to be. How long would a process like this take if indeed it actually happens? Well, it's difficult to say. If you could get income growth, certainly it wouldn't take as long as if you didn't get income growth. Unfortunately, as your, your previous guests were alluding to, there hasn't been real income growth. And growth, and in the absence of government stimulus, there hasn't been any growth in disposable income either. So to get that ratio back in line, it would really have to come from deleveraging, which has not happened yet. So does this mean that individuals are having difficulty paying their bills? Because, I mean, if you take a look at the pressure, at least from interest rates, that seems to have subsided a little bit. Well, it's interesting. I think that's the perception, but not the reality. Bankruptcies are up, consumer bankruptcies, that is, are up 14% year over year. So that's not an improvement. Um, foreclosures, near all-time highs at about 4.6%. 90-day uh, delinquencies, which includes 30, 60, 90 days over, overdue, made new highs around 10%. So I think the reality is, is that people are not improving their bill paying. Uh, it's actually getting worse. So what does that mean for investors right now? I mean, if they took a look at all of this data, they put it mm -hmm. together with the ISM numbers. Right. They look at it with the GDP report, the revision to 2.7 percent. Mm -hmm. I mean, this doesn't sound like a very positive outlook. I think it's a very tricky outlook for investors. Um, the liquidity trade was really what I think brought us out of the March 2009 lows. We saw liquidity trade meaning government is flushing the banks full of money? Correct. We saw an increase in the monetary base of, we went from about $800 billion to over $2 trillion. Now, it was certainly necessary, uh, but what I think we're seeing now is a pullback in liquidity, and that pullback in liquidity has corresponded to the pullback in the markets because the fundamental improvement has certainly just not been there. So if there's this pullback in liquidity, does that mean that there's just not credit available even to those that qualify? Yes, I think, I think that is true. Uh, when we look at consumer lending, for example, it has contracted. Uh, it has contracted 17 out of the last 21 months, which is unprecedented by about $150 billion. So it, it is certainly concerning that a consumer whose incomes are not growing uh, also cannot get access to credit. And so this means that the economy is still in trouble because, what, a three quarters of the economy is consumer spending? Yeah, 70 percent, give or take. Yes, correct. So what does that mean in the rest of the year for investors? Should they just buy treasuries and hunker down? Well, certainly that's what people have been doing, right? I, I mean, we see, you know, we see the 10 year below below three. Uh, it's, it's certainly been a flight to quality trade. Um, and I think that tells you something about the way investors are perceiving risk again, whereas the risk trade was in vogue. Late last year and early People this year. People spending a lot of spending and investing on riskier assets. Correct. That's gone. It's changed. There certainly was an inflection point in sort of early May. All right. We're going to have to leave it there. But I want to thank you very much, Peter Cicchini, coming thank to you. us from BGC Financial, uh, giving us some insight into the troubles perhaps ahead.